The idea of listening to sound from two speakers is nothing new. Stereo sound was first rolled out in 1881 by French engineer Clément Adir, where listeners at the Paris Electrical Exhibition could listen to performances from multiple telephone receivers at once. Those who were fortunate to listen to the performances in left and right phone receivers commented on how hearing the event from different channels of audio brought the performances to life. Fast forward 50 years into the 1930s, and talkie movies were all the rage. Viewers would watch these movies in one channel of sound, known as mono. The limited technology at the time did not allow viewers to enjoy audio that panned the big screen when actors or action movies moved around on screen. Not satisfied with the theatrical experience, or to be outdone by the French, British engineer Alan Blumline set out to change this with stereo sound. As early as 1933, Blumline began experimenting with how to create two channels of sound. After much trial and error, his vision of audio and action sound following the images on screen were fully realized in 1935. Since the 1930s, however, stereo has basically stayed the same. While stereo isn't bad, it's nothing compared to today's hero mixes of Dolby Atmos or DTSX with their dozens of audio channels designed to give viewers total 360 degree coverage. With Dolby and DTS continuing to pioneer sound, is stereo dead? Not quite. In this video, Movie University speaks with Iris Wu, creator of Ambidio, a company that is propelling the next level of stereo sound. Dolby Atmos and DTSX are undoubtedly the kings of surround sound in the entertainment world. As expected, a tremendous amount of time and manpower is committed by studios and artists to ensure that audio experiences created in these mixes sounds their absolute best. While having heard something in surround sound or owning a system in it is bragging rights, oftentimes most consumers will never hear audio in Atmos or DTSX because of the lack of hardware on hand to play the formats. Situations such as flying on a plane, listening on a subway, or watching from a laptop has users consume content in stereo. When this happens, a grandiose experience is diminished. To help users have a better experience watching content, Wu created Ambidio several years ago. I don't know when I started it because the whole thing is a gradual process. I got an idea from my um, master thesis actually. And then I show it to Skywalker Sound, and then people say, hey, you should start a company. Um, then we really start operating at 2017, 16 or 17, I guess. So mm -hmm. the whole thing about in video is we try to create immersive sound with two speakers because that's how people listen to the content nowadays. I'm in this amazing dub stage. People spend hours and hours and creating this immersive or amazing sound field, the believable auditory world. But if it, they are lucky, they got one or two months in the theater, right? With a proper sound system. system. And after that, it goes to the home entertainment. That's the rest of their, rest of their life. And most of people actually listen in two speaker. That's your laptop, your tablet, your phone, your television screen. So this is just a nice alternative. It's easier for people and they can still have the sound closer to the creative intent anywhere they want without doing anything. So how does Ambidio create immersive sound from two speakers and how do creatives work in the format? So most of the spatial audio or immersive sound or whatever, the banner of sound, banner of audio, people give them cool buzzword. So most of them are based on something called HRTF head related transfer function model the transparent path from the speaker to your ear and your ear have this little things like fold and things so when the sound hits your ear it bounces around so for nvidia we work on some other theory so we take the sound and then massage in a way that your brain will recognize so if we can just reverse those stuff and then make sure that it's presented in a way that your brain can pick it up and then your brain will interpret hey this is the sound this is coming from this and that so that's the basic theory of nvidia so how do we create that we create we provide plugin to post-production houses like skywalker sound so they have this 51071 for example and then they use our plugin like and then it output a two channel 
Probably the best part about Nvidia is that it doesn't cost consumers anything and no special equipment is needed. And it just works for the audience. They don't need to download anything or get new hardware. It just works. Who doesn't see Nvidia stopping with just movies anytime soon? We also have some collaborations in sports, for example. A lot of sports broadcasting is around, but it's the same thing. If it's broadcasting, but people have, don't have the, the AM or device to hear it, it's, it's gone. So we can capture all those stuff. And we have some collaboration in music too. So music or live concert is kind of cool stuff. So anything you think of with sound, with stereo. Let me know in the comment section below what audio format do you most consume movies and TV shows in? This is Movie University, education and cinema.